after the split with Mark Miro. <laughs> Sorry, your face is just like, it's hard to get through this. And I, I feel it too. Yeah. <laughs> I feel it inside. Jacqueline teams up with Terry Reynolds. And I actually, I love Terry Reynolds. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, But they come together in Vince Russo's wet dream of PMS. Pretty Mean Sisters. Yeah. <laughs> there is a an angle where uh, D'Lo Brown accidentally bumps Terry off of the apron and she, quote, miscarries. Um, oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. And then D'Lo Brown becomes a servant to PMS and, like, does all of their bit. Like, it's not good. It's not good. And it doesn't get better. It does not get better. Like a doctor. Yeah. A oh, doc I, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. A doctor eventually tells D'Lo that like, oh, that never happened in his servitude. He's now free. But yeah, uh, go, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, I remember there being like a whole angle where part one of his like acts of servitude, he had to go get Jacqueline and Terry like tampons out of the store. I remember that. Mm hmm. Yeah, stuff like, like that. That's just like, and I remember like growing up and being like the only girl that I knew that was into wrestling. You know, I was like eight, nine, ten, however old through all of this stuff. You know, and, and older, loving wrestling and having like that's like around the age that guys kind of boys start treating you different too. You know, and so hearing like PMS and that whole thing, and then like they ask their dad what that means, or their parents, or whatever, and or their older brothers or whoever, and then that kind of gets ingrained. So I literally have memories of like little boys like either making fun of me or like other people about like, oh yeah, because you're just PMS, and it's like you know being like a girl being like, uh, what? <laughs> you know, like I'm like nine or eight or you know, it's just yeah. like that's yeah, not happening I yet. <laughs> exactly yeah and like I remember that being like one of those defining moments as a younger girl too where you realize that you're different that you get treated the, differently than boys you know yeah mm -hmm. yeah I I don't have any memories quite like that mm -hmm. um but I I remember like this angle makes you really like embarrassed like like the act of like forcing him to go to the the store to get them tampons just reinforces the shame of having a period and needing menstrual products. And like, as someone who I was probably about to like start my period if I had not just, and mm -hmm. like that just like reinforces that shame that was already there. I feel like that has really shifted. Um, and like you see like period clubs and things like that in schools and, you know, millennial and Gen Z men have um, pads and tampons available um, in their homes when they don't live with women for people who are visiting, who are menstruating. Like, yes, this is the direction we need to go, not whatever happens in Vince Russo's mind. Exactly. And I can't even imagine what goes on in his house every, yeah, just no, thank you. <laughs> I think actually the inside of his mind is one of the circles of hell. Like if hell is real, that's where it is. Oh my God. That reminds me, this is a total tangent, which I feel like this, that's my specialty is like tangenting off of topics, but it reminds me of like American Horror Story, the coven season. I don't know if you ever watched that show. But there's like a whole thing, spoiler alert, where it's like there's like a test and you have to make it through your own personal idea of hell. Being in Vince Russo's mind would be that test of like, and if you don't pass, you're stuck in hell, which is Vince Russo's mind. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that would be hell. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. Or, or Jim Cornette's, maybe, I think. I almost did a spit take at your face on that. <laughs> well, I was trying to decide like who treats women better out of the two of them. It's honestly probably, I mean, Cornette is at least a progressive voter. 
I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I think they're probably just varying degrees of hell. Like, like one is one circle of hell. And then like, I think Vince Russo's might be the deeper circle. Like if you've been really bad, that's where you go. Okay. Yeah. Valid. <laughs> Depending on your gender. I gotta toe the line. <laughs> yeah. your sins, I gotta toe the line. Huh? Wait, what? I said what you're saying is I better toe the line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So Vince Russo somehow manages to make the PMS storyline even worse. Um, For like a hot moment in time. Um. Ken Shamrock has a sister in storyline in WWF, Ryan Shamrock. And there's this whole storyline with Val Venus um, where he's like seducing her. And that's how Ken Shamrock and him have this because that's when he's doing his porn star thing. Yeah. Um, Wait, but she- was Ryan was Ryan Shamrock actually his biological sister? Or was it they, were they just named Ryan Shamrock? Okay. <laughs> I was like, just checking. I couldn't remember that part. I can't remember. I'm going to say no, just because like, I feel like Ken Shamrock would have had like a meltdown based on the things that she had to do. Um, if it was his actual mm-hmm. sister. Yeah. Okay. Um, just based on who he is on Twitter. Um, so, uh, but so she becomes a jilted lover of Val Venus and thusly mm-hmm. joins PMS because that's where women go when they're jilted from romantic relationships. Because Terry and Goldust had just broken up in storyline. I'm not sure if that's in real life if they had broken up yet. Mm-hmm. And um, Jacqueline had broken up with uh, Miro. So mm-hmm. that's that's where they were going. And um so what's the message there? Like that jaded women who uh leave their relationships or can't be in a relationship, like they have to just all be together. It's the only place they're accepted or wanted. <laughs> and they just all have PMS together because their cycles all sync up and uh oh my god. And that's wow. not the worst part. <laughs> Hmm. Enter a wrestler who during this period of time was known as Meat. It's Sean oh, Spaziak. Oh god. When I saw because I watched some of the entrances with him and like from the little clip, because I mean they're they're old, so the quality isn't that great. And when I um the thumbnail became larger, because initially I was like, when did Jackie work with Test? And then, because I completely forgot Sean Sh- Sh- Stasiak existed, and then he popped up, and I was like, "Oh no, that's him as Meat! Oh my god!" So Meat's <laughs> whole thing was he was PMS's boy toy, and that's yeah. putting it nicely. Yeah. Um. He so he lost a lot of his matches because he was so tired of having sex that's with right. all the women. He had no energy oh left god. to fight oh my matches. God. Oh my god. That that was his his gimmick. During this time, Ryan Shamrock leaves WWF. I don't know why. I wonder why. Yeah. <laughs> they were doing such great things with her. Um Jacqueline is the one who ends this alliance because Meat was too tired to please her. <laughs> I just she's standing up for her pleasure you know what that's a feminist power move right there I'm gonna go with that (laughs) that is a twist on it yes yes I'm putting a spin Mm -hmm. yeah I'm sure that's where they were going with it that's what they were thinking you know Vince Russo was just trying to really work in feminist angles into storyline however he could that was really difficult for me to even jokingly say (laughs) dear god um mm. 